Today we're going to be using the new Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi to control a 3D printer's hot end. I'm doing this as the first part of a project, working towards building my own version of a PET bottle recycler to produce filament for my 3D printer. I already have an idea of what I want the machine to look like mechanically, so in this video I'm going to focus on building the electronics to provide temperature control of the hot end and drive the extruder motor. I'm going to start by doing this through the Uno R4 for prototyping. The Uno R4 comes in two versions, the Minima, which is a basic version, and then the Wi-Fi version, which has Wi-Fi and an integrated LED matrix. They both have a new, more powerful 32-bit processor, as well as significantly increased SRAM and flash memory, allowing you to build more complex projects. The LED matrix on the board is really useful for quickly displaying the status or mode, and you can even run some animations or games on it. For prototyping, I'm going to be using it as a rolling graph of the hot end temperature, so we can see how it's tracking towards the set point. To turn a bottle into filament, we need a way to melt the plastic. To do that, I'm going to be using the hot end from a 3D printer. An Arduino obviously can't pass through enough power to heat the hot end by itself, so for that we're going to be using a power MOSFET. This will take a PWM signal from the Arduino and use it to control the power supplied to the hot end, so that we can maintain a set temperature. I'm also going to add an I2C OLED display to display the exact temperature and allow us to make changes to the temperature and extruder motor speed. A temperature sensing element or thermistor is also built into the hot end, and we'll use the signal from this to tell the Arduino what the actual temperature of the hot end is so that it knows whether to turn the heating element on or off. As a starting point, I've made up a basic circuit on the breadboard to test that we're actually able to control the hot end. There are two main circuits here. One with a power MOSFET and some resistors to control the heating element, and a second with a capacitor and resistor to read in the temperature. As I said earlier, I'm going to be using the LED matrix on the Arduino as a means of indicating how the temperature in the hot end is tracking towards the set point. I've also added the display which will give us the exact temperature readout, the temperature set point that we're working towards, and for now an indication of the PWM value being applied to the hot end. I've also included a potentiometer to adjust the temperature set point between an upper and a lower limit. So let's put power onto the circuit and we'll hopefully be able to see how it heats up on the thermal camera. On the OLED display we can see the temperature set point, the current temperature and then the PWM output to the hot end. This stays at the maximum while heating up and then as the temperature approaches the set point it starts tapering off. I've used the last column of the LED matrix on the Arduino to indicate the current set point. The graph then loops around increasing as the temperature increases. It is quite slow as I'm using a supply voltage of 12 volts where the hot end is rated at 24 volts. I'm using a PID control function to control the temperature of the hot end. So I've tuned the proportional, integral and derivative gain values to provide reasonably good tracking of the set point. We can also see that the hot end is heated up on the thermal camera. Now that we got the system working on the breadboard, let's turn it into something a bit more permanent and reliable for the project. I drew up a schematic and designed a PCB in the form of a shield to fit on top of the Arduino. This shield has a heating element circuit, a thermistor circuit, and a TMC2208 stepper motor driver to drive the extruder. It's also got an ITC OLED display and a rotary push button to make changes to the settings. PCBWay then made them up for me. They have a really easy to use one page order form to upload your files to, choose from a range of manufacturing options with defaults pre-selected, and they'll then make them up for you in just 24 hours for $5. They also offer a range of shipping options to fit your timing and budget. If you haven't already tried making your own PCBs for a project, I definitely recommend trying out PCBWay to take your projects to the next level. I chose a white PCB with a black silk screen, just because I haven't tried this color scheme before. The PCB is designed to interface with the Arduino through some header pins, which will add to the underside. Now we just need to get the components soldered onto the board. I soldered the components to the board starting with the smallest components and moving to the larger ones. 
Because this first one is still a prototype board, I'm going to solder some female header strips onto the stepper motor and display pads so that I can remove the display and driver to use on the final board. I also soldered the header pins for the Arduino into place while it was plugged in. This keeps them lined up properly. And with the soldering done, it's time for the moment of truth. I plugged in the motor driver, jumper and display. I then screwed the heating elements and thermistor into the terminals and plugged it in for programming. I'll put the sketch up on my blog. It's just a simple Arduino sketch that runs a PID control loop to control the temperature of the hot end and pulses a stepper motor driver to control the motor. It's also got some code to drive the display and manage input from the rotary push button. Now let's get it uploaded to the board and see how it works. The board will run on USB power from the computer, but won't drive the motor or heat the elements up. We need to add a 12 volt supply to the shield's power input to power those, so let's get that plugged in. And now the board's running. The actual temperature is shown in the first line and we can adjust the temperature set point using the rotary push button. The line below that allows us to change the motor speed on the extruder and the bottom line lets us turn the extruder motor on or off, either running forward or in reverse. I'm quite happy with how this has all come out. For the final version, I might try and make the PCB a bit more compact, perhaps using a smaller form factor Arduino as well. But this will be great to get started building the mechanical parts for the PET bottle recycler. If you're interested in seeing the project progress, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've got a geared stepper motor and pulleys coming to try out, and some cool ideas for a removable spool that I can easily move across to my printer when the filament has been extruded. I'm also really interested to see how a recycled PET version of my 3D printable Raspberry Pi case turns out. Let me know in the comment section if you've got any suggestions for improvements that I can make to the final version. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.